Monsters, aliens, creatures, and things of every shape and size are the backbone of horror cinema. As essential to the foundations of our big picture scares as red lighting, smoke machines, Christopher Lee, and the music of John Carpenter. And the payoff so often lies in the reveal, when the director gets to ditch the theatrics and bring us face to face with our worst fears. But just because this moment carries so much weight, doesn't mean your average filmmaker is keen to hold on to it until the very end. So I am Gareth, this is What Culture Horror, and here are 10 horror movies where the monster is revealed almost immediately. Number 10 Splinter when young couples Seth and Polly fall for a confidence trick and get carjacked on the way to a romantic camping holiday, it seems like things can only go one way. Except they don't. A flat tire leads Seth, Polly, and the carjackers, escaped convict Dennis and his drug addicted girlfriend Lacey, to an abandoned petrol station. And things go from bad to worse in a way nobody who hadn't seen the trailer or the film title could have predicted. This is the setup for Toby Wilkins' Splinter a viral monster horror movie that goes from road trip to chamber piece in a matter of minutes. And it isn't long until the creepy crawling makes itself known. Never mind that the very thing which blew out the group's tire in the first place was an infected animal, the petrol station is quickly crawling with infected hosts and body parts, all controlled by a splintery fungus that isn't shy about putting itself out there. What does it want? To multiply. Why does it want this? Ah, who knows. Number 9. Mad God Phil Tippett's stop-motion horror masterpiece Mad God finally arrived on our screens in 2021. After a 30-year production that saw Tippett and crews of volunteers put it together in their weekends and downtime, while Tippett was working on other more financially salient projects. But it was worth the wait, baby! With every shot representing a mastery of the form, as an unnamed assassin descends into the earth, through layer upon layer of hellscapes and body horror nightmares, to destroy the fetid world below. However, despite the place existing just to sustain itself, this horrific world and the creatures that inhabit it don't seem to want to go without a fight. Rather than a single monster, pretty much everything the assassin encounters on his journey is designed to disgust, repel, or attack him. Thus, from the very first sequence, we see the monsters of Mad God in their full glory, giving and receiving innumerable tortures and debasements. It is with some satisfaction, then, when the assassin's presumed defective bomb restarts at the film's conclusion, promising an end to these creatures once and for all. Number 8. The Wolfman Before Universal's plan to reboot and interconnect its monster movies in the now-defunct Dark Universe, Benicio Del Toro loomed large as the iconic lichen in Joe Johnston's The Wolfman. While the movie may not have fared well with critics or cinema-goers, making as it did a clear loss at the box office, it did offer up some truly intense moments that reminded everyone just how much fun a good old-fashioned monster movie can be. A significant part of this was its effort to get the monster on screen straight out of the gate. Too often, these films spend the first hour and change on scene setting and exposition, leaving audiences snoring in the aisles. The Wolfman, however, gives us a full-on werewolf attack just after the opening credits, and right before the title card, ensuring we know precisely what's in store. Unfortunately, the rest of the film doesn't quite live up to this promise, and by the time we get to the third act wirefighting battle between Del Toro and Anthony Hopkins' respective wolves, the preceding tension and terror has been sullied. Now watch your favorite favorite monster movie of all time. Is it The Wolfman or something else? You let me know in the comment section down below. Number 7. Feast John Gulliger's Feast puts a group of strangers, including Krista Allen, Balthasar Getty, and, well, Henry Rollins, together in a remote Nevadan bar, where they must work together in order to survive the onslaught of a group of flesh-eating monsters. Seems like a fairly straightforward horror movie setup, and it is, except for one detail. We know what we're dealing with almost immediately. Despite warnings from the off that something awful and dangerous is on its way, it takes the death of Hero, an outsider who stumbles into the bar covered in blood to make everyone sit up and take note. Within the first 10 minutes of screen time, Hero whips out the head of one of the attacking creatures, and just in case that fails to capture our attention, one of the very same creatures bursts through the bar window and decapitates him for good measure. Unleashed upon the bar's patrons, the monsters are soon out in full force, sweeping from the rafters and hacking off legs. And while keeping the creepy things in the dark a little longer usually does wonders for a film, feasts 
candid approach makes it all the more entertaining. Number 6. Alien 3 Giving the keys to the kingdom to a junior hire is always going to be a risk, but none more so perhaps than Alien 3, in which 20th Century Fox brought on an early career David Fincher to direct, despite the fact he had never helmed a feature film before. Nonetheless, New Blood offers the opportunity to diverge from the established formula and come at things from a slightly different angle. Rather than the typical hour-long, tension-building preamble favoured by every other film in the series, Alien 3 cut straight to the chase. Fincher knows we've seen James Cameron's Aliens, and picking up where the previous film left off, proceeds to bomb straight in with a facehugger attack in the title sequence. While the results of the attack and subsequent crash, which saw the death of fan favourites Newt and Hicks, may not have gone over well with fans, there is no denying that putting the aliens on our screen straight out of the gate was a bold move. And it is the kind of bold move that some of the slightly more tedious franchise entries, such as 2017 Alien Covenant could have benefited from, actually. If only, eh? Cheers for watching this video today, and if you like yourself some glorious horror, then tap on that subscribe button down below for more of this sort of stuff. Number 5. It we all know the scene. Sweet little Georgie, decked in wellies and a yellow raincoat, sails his paper boat in the gutters of Derry as the skies open upon him. He loses his boat down a storm drain, and there, waiting in the dark, is the monstrous, grinning, white-skinned clown Pennywise, promising cotton candy and popcorn if Georgie will only reach in to get his boat back. The power of this opening from Andy Muschietti's It, adapted from Stephen King's Mammoth Tome, lies not only in the distinctiveness of the visuals, but also in the fact that the monster quite literally introduces himself, before, you know, biting off a six-year-old's arm. And Muschietti holds nothing back. All the blood, all the terror, all the screaming, and all the many sharp rows of teeth. Yep, that's nightmare fuel right there. Far from diminishing Pennywise's presence through the film's first act, as he menaces Derry from the shadows, the first scene heightens it. We know for certain from the outset that there are no limits, no horrors to which the rest of the film isn't willing to extend. Number 4. The Blob Irvin Yeaworth's sci-fi horror The Blob opens up on Steve McQueen, yep, that's Steve McQueen, and Annette Corsart spending some quality time at make-out points when a meteor from space hits. Inside is a gelatinous ooze that absorbs anything it touches, and grows exponentially as a result, soon wreaking havoc on the town and threatening the national security of the good old US of A. Despite the sprightly, tongue-in-cheek Burt Bacharach pen theme song that kicks off the film, the titular creature is no trifle, or jelly for that matter, and Yeaworth makes sure it's with us from the word go. Steve, McQueen's aptly named character, and Jane, played by Corsode, race to the site of the meteor's landing in the first few minutes of the film, but not fast enough to prevent local old man Barney, played by Olin Holland, poking it with a stick and unleashing the monster inside. The meteor cracks, the blob makes its move, and Barney's arm is quickly engulfed by the hungry gunge. The blob does indeed creep and leap and glide and slide across the floor, but mostly it just sticks to things. Number 3. A Quiet Place a Quiet Place speaks to some of our worst nightmares. Taking place in a post-apocalyptic landscape where feral alien monsters have lain waste to most of the civilized world, and driven humanity to the fringes. Hypersensitive to sound, the creatures roam the abandoned fields, forests, towns, and houses looking for prey. And the Abbott family have managed to survive using nothing but their wits and a monastic dedication to silence. Before John Krasinski's sci-fi horror became a franchise, spawning spin-offs, sequels, and prequels, it was something of a smaller passion project that he'd been carrying with him since university. And while someone without the same industry clout and ability to attract financing for the project might have just made the picture with a lot of rustling bushes and distant noises, he got the most out of his sizable CG budget, giving the aliens a full-fleshed form from the outset. And why wouldn't you? Considering how much of the film is spent in silence, it was essential to get the visuals right early on. It's just a pity that the reveal of the creature's car comes when one of them eats the abbot's four-year-old son. I am still not over that. Number 2. The Host 
Long before Bong Joon-ho was raking in the Oscars and torching the English-speaking world's aversion to subtitles, he was one of the naughty's pioneers of Korean cinema. Matching Park Chan-wook pound-for-pound in character, cinematography, social commentary, and assorted narrative miseries. This is precisely the nexus in which his mid-decade creature feature, The Host, resides. Following a mass dumping of formaldehyde in the Han River, a many-legged fish-like monster spawns and unleashes itself upon the good people of Seoul. As the film revolves around the creature and the supposedly viral infection it causes in humans, Bong gets it up on screen and wreaking havoc early doors. It stomps, it mashes, it swallows, and it abducts people to its sewer lair. However, not only is the monster a human creation, so is the non-existent virus. The government and international community use the mere idea of a virus as carte blanche to implement martial law and use chemical weapons on the population. So yes, maybe the real monster is humanity here, but either way, we see it from the start. Number 1. The Birds Though recognized as one of the founding fathers of the genre as we know it, Alfred Hitchcock didn't actually make that many out-and-out -out horror movies. But those he did turn his lens to have a special place in film history for a whole variety of reasons, such as the case for his avian atrocity classic The Birds, which saw him make generations of viewers more cautious towards our feathered friends. And never has a film arrived at its monster any sooner. The sound of multitudinous wings and squawks is heard over the Universal Pictures logo, and as it fades out, we are treated to a hurricane of screaming, flapping birds that usher in the titles and credits. From there, it is a slow journey into hell, as the monstrous birds skulk, loom, and menace the corners, edges, and skies of every scene and shot. Though it is not until some way into the film that they execute their first all-out aerial assault, by then we are well aware of what we're dealing with, and there's absolutely nothing we can do to stop them.